United Against Cancer. Welcome to the United Against Cancer series. My name is Zainab Shinkapi Babudu. I'm a pediatrician, a child health specialist, and a cancer advocate, a board member of the Union for International Cancer Control, and dedicated to improving cancer control and closing the disparities that we're facing globally when it comes to different cancers. Thank you for joining us today. And uh, Vicky Durston is a director of policy and advocacy. She's a health leader and an advanced breast cancer uh, specialist in particular. She's the president of the General Assembly and also is involved in amateur football. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself and your background, Vicky. Thank you so much for having me. It's, it's such a pr privilege to be here. Uh, certainly my role at Breast Cancer Network Australia is, uh, as you'd mentioned, Director of Policy Advocacy and Support Services. Uh, I have a background in health administration and health management, but my love for many, many years has been in cancer care and uh, as a registered nurse working in both the public and private healthcare systems. And so bring that clinical context to this role in policy and advocacy at Breast Cancer Network Australia. So um, enjoy the role thoroughly. I've been in this role now for just on four and a half years. And mm -hmm. the role is to really work to drive the advocacy agenda for breast cancer in Australia, but leveraging off those uh, with a lived experience and providing yeah. the very best in information and support for those people affected. Well, that's that's very interesting. Uh, we're seeing a more prominent role played by patients with lived experiences and helping to shape and influence policies. So it's people like you that bring them together and actually translate the experiences they've had across the spectrum into policies that can improve the outcome in countries. And when you say breast cancer in Australia, uh, oh, of course, Australia is a high income country, a lot of high end uh, technology available. Um, but we also know that you have indigenous populations. So it would be helpful if we have a little background about the uh, picture of breast cancer in Australia. What we know in Australia is that one in seven uh, women will be diagnosed with breast cancer in Australia. And what we do know is that we have people living in rural and regional parts of Australia. And so we know that disparities and access to care is very different uh, for people living in those different regions and also in different cultural contexts. So we have Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities. We also have our um, culturally linguistic diverse communities as well. We also um, consider those with disability as well as those from LGBTIQ plus communities as well. So when we think about our advocacy, our information and support, um, we really need to cut through all those different groups and diverse populations, as well as considering location and where people might live and the access to treatment and care that they're looking for. When we know that clinical trials are often in the metro areas or metro cities and often um, are sometimes challenging to access in rural and regional parts of Australia. So those disparities create um, the inequities uh, across this country. And so that is something that we always grapple with um, in the in the cancer control area of our uh, work that we do. Yeah, I'd imagine so. We face a lot of um, socioeconomic and cultural barriers that have to be considered when uh, putting in place policies or even implementing them. And as you mentioned, you have a very wide range of people, both in terms of 
uh, economy, capacity, uh, location, geography, and that can make it sometimes complex. So what, what would you say are the socioeconomic factors that influence breast cancer outcomes that you have particularly addressed in the, the association, as well as uh, being in the position that you're in, in the ABC Alliance? And how have you used strategies to, what strategies have you employed in particular to address these uh, white disparities? Yeah, look, it's a, it's a really interesting question and I'm not sure I have all the answers. <laughs> But we certainly endeavour to work with our partners. You know, it, it is something that no one can do on their own. I really feel strongly about that, that it is working with the health systems and we have a federated model within Australia where we have state-based health systems. Um, but also it's what are the learnings that can be shared. So when we talk about the role that we play globally on the ABC Global Alliance with um, our partners in metastatic breast cancer, and we know the disparities for metastatic breast cancer are, are wider than those with early breast cancer. When we think about uh, the Lancet Breast Cancer Commission talked about these widening disparities for people with metastatic disease, um, those learnings, I think, can be shared in the sense that we want to work to understand some foundational data. So globally, what we're, what we're trying to do when we've started advocating for this, this is an example in Australia, where we want to try and establish some, some baseline data of understanding how many people are living with metastatic breast cancer mm -hmm. and being able to share that methodology around the world so that we can we can now ensure that those people become visible. Right now, those people are actually in our data systems invisible. They, The campaign that we ran last year was, I count, I am counted, I want to be counted. Um, oh, and in that. order to be able to, yeah, in order to be able to um, ensure that we can understand those unmet needs of all groups, whether it's metastatic, whether it's our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander groups, whatever groups they may be, they need to be counted in our data systems. And so to inform our policy, to inform um, priority planning for service delivery, for supportive care, to understand what their unmet needs, we want to get that real foundational uh, piece sorted. And so one of those uh, big advocacy priorities for Breast Cancer Network Australia and in Australia through uh, Cancer Australia is to build about some really strong data frameworks. And so being able to share that with the ABC Global Alliance and our global partners in Canada and in um, Portugal and uh, with yourself and with the UICC and some of the, our other partners around the world. I think that foundational data is important because then we can start really diving into understanding what some of those economic, social economic needs are, but also what those unmet needs in, in different countries might look like. Oh, yes, I feel absolutely. like I'm going all over the place <laughs> no no it's uh, it's amazing it's because of the type of work that you're doing once you're involved in policy you have to go all over the place and uh, in a country that is so large and diverse uh, it's important that we cover like you rightly said the unmet needs in that uh, response you talked about the Lancet Commission on Breast Cancer, and also the role of uh, Breast Cancer Network Australia. Can we know a bit more about how that has um, helped you to uh, amplify, or should I say network globally? Uh, because the Lancet is a high-end journal and high-impact journal, and um, the commissions have been particularly useful, uh, that platform in putting together the data. And also maybe you can mention the digital revolution that we're seeing across the world, not necessarily in terms of um, AI, but how digitalization is helping you to improve the data that you're collecting obviously for us in Africa is not as advanced and health systems do need more technology. 
so a lot of questions rammed in there, a bit about the Lancet Commission and the impacts of Breast Cancer Network Australia, as well as uh, the digitalization of your data. So what we learned from the Lancet Breast Cancer Commission report is that the notion that breast cancer has been solved is, is not accurate. What, what that report is showing us is that um, often there's a perception in Australia that with survival rates improving, that the effort and energy needs to be placed elsewhere. And so it is our role at Breast Cancer Network Australia with our other partners within uh, the not-for-profit um, space uh, within mm -hmm. Australia, working alongside Cancer Australia, our Cancer Council organisations. Um, it's really to ensure that it remains on the agenda and that our organisation, uh, we have over 60 uh, what we call patient advocates or consumer representatives that are trained to ensure that the voice of those living with breast cancer is at the table when decisions are made, whether it's by the Commonwealth Government, whether it's state government, they work with researchers to inform that that voice is always front and centre, that they can ensure that that lived experience is not... Um, it's not lost in all of this and the decision-making, but getting back to the report and what we're seeing is we've still got a long way to go and these disparities are widening. We know in Australia uh, the economic climate is challenging. We know our health system around our country is under enormous pressure following the COVID epidemic, pandemic, I should mm -hmm. say. And so what we're, what we're seeing in this country is the disparities becoming one, those financial out-of-pocket costs um, and those unmet needs for people that experience breast cancer, experience breast cancer treatment, extend well beyond their diagnosis. And so what are those learnings that can be shared with other countries as and, and how do we help in, in that space to be able to share those learnings. Mm -hmm. To your next question around um, leveraging data mm -hmm. and le leveraging digital, I think certainly with Australia, we're on the cusp of real change around digital information and digital resourcing. And I think what we're seeing in AI is uh, patients that are looking for that information. They're looking to understand when I'm first diagnosed or I'm going through treatment, how can I get information in a timely way? What we would say is we want people to ensure that they're getting the reliable and best evidence information that's right for them by reputable resources like our cancer control agencies, like Breast Cancer Network Australia. And we're really leveraging that digital um, I suppose, mechanism or platform to be able to do that through our websites, um, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So that is something that we're working with the ABC Global Alliance where we're sharing around the world our digital resources so that we can mm -hmm. have them all housed in one location so people from around the world in different mm -hmm. languages can access oh. that best evidence um, resource, resources. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.